we now turn to the third and final section of the Codex Mendoza on social life in the Aztec world. Beginning with the birth of the new Aztec child, the section chronologically presents lifetime milestones as the person grows into man or womanhood. This is a unique subject in the surviving literature from the Aztec civilization. It is therefore a valuable source text on how the Aztecs regarded their own places in society. Socializing the Aztec infants came within days of birth. Like the solid lines linking people to places and times from the last episode, the dotted lines mark progression. The newborn, appearing first in a crib at left, is given four days, marked by the colored rosettes, which usually stand for 20-day periods. After the four days, an elderly midwife carries the infant around a pot of water over a mat. Depending on its gender, it will be given miniature instruments representing their destiny. Crafts and warfare for the boy, cleansing and weaving for the girl. With speech scrolls issuing from their mouths, the three boys at right ceremonially name the child. The parents, at left, then take their child to the temple for priestly blessings. The children begin to mature. As mentioned earlier in this episode, dots were a common way to count from 1 to 19, before the flag used for a unit of 20. Here they count the child's age and years, such as the three dots for the boy with his father, at left, and the girl with her mother, at right. They have started wearing clothes, and their daily diet was half a tortilla. By the age of four, they could begin performing chores, and they could eat a whole tortilla per day. Between five and six, the children became more productive, taking wares to the marketplace or spinning cotton into thread. The Aztecs were also infamous for corporal punishment, and among their most notorious disciplinary measures for an unruly child was holding their face over the choking, irritating fumes of burning chili peppers. A miscreant boy could also be forced to lay on bare dirt with his hands bound, or a girl would be sent to clean in the dark of night. An incorrigible child may even be sold into slavery until they worked off the payment. But these were exceptional cases. The same page follows with better comported teenagers, becoming able workers as they haul goods, make tortillas, catch fish, and weave cloths. They also continued to develop in their professions, which were often hereditary. Here we see an Aztec Tlaquilo scribe teaching his son the arts of writing through pictures to create works such as murals and codices. The small curl design is in fact an Aztec glyph for writing. And when they came of age, they were ready for two landmark events, education and marriage. The Aztecs were the first society in the New World known to offer public education. The schools included the priestly Calmecac and the military Telpochcali. Footprints indicate trajectory here toward the schools and to the mat where the young man and woman would hold their wedding. This scene is one of the most celebrated from the Codex Mendoza. Seated on the mat in the house center, a knot between the newlyweds clothes symbolizes their union. At the corners are elders delivering wewe tlatoli, the sayings of the elders, on proper conduct in the home and out in the world. Other details include an incense bowl, a cooked turkey, and alcoholic pulque. Drinking was restricted to major ceremonies such as weddings, but those hardy enough to reach old age could drink as much as they wanted. It is a fitting scene with which to conclude the Aztec life cycle in the Codex Mendoza. As we continue the subject of picture writing in Mexico, our next episode will go deeper into the ancient Codex traditions of Oaxaca and the Central Highlands, so please join us for it. <laughs>